Hello, friends. Ready for the next two chapters? Chapter 19, The Inventing Room, Everlasting Gobstoppers and Hair Toffee. When Mr. Wonka shouted, Stop the boat! The Oompa Loompas jammed their oars into the river and backed water furiously. The boat stopped. The Oompa Loompas guided the boat alongside the red door. On the door it said, Inventing Room, Private, Keep Out. Mr. Wonka took a key from his pocket, leaned over the side of the door, or side of the boat, and put the key inside the keyhole. This is the most important room in the entire factory, he said. All my most secret new inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Old Fickle Grubber would give his front teeth to be allowed inside for just three minutes. So would Prodnose and Slugworth and all the other rotten chocolate makers. But now listen to me. I want no messing about when you go in. No touching, no meddling, and no tasting. Is that agreed? Yes, yes, cried the children. Or the children cried, we won't touch a thing. Up to now, Mr. Wonka said, nobody else, not even an Oompa Loompa, has ever been allowed in here. He opened the door and stepped out of the boat into the room. The four children and their parents all scrambled after him. Don't touch, shouted Mr. Wonka, and don't knock anything over. Charlie Bucket stared around the gigantic room in which he now found himself. The place was like a witch's kitchen. All about him, black metal pots were boiling and bubbling on huge stoves, and kettles were hissing and pans were sizzling, and strange iron machines were clanking and sputtering, and there were pipes running all over the ceilings and walls, and the whole place was filled with smoke and steam and delicious rich smells. Mr. Wonka himself had suddenly become more, even more excited than usual, and anyone could see that this was the room he loved best of all. He was hopping about among the saucepans and the machines like a child among his Christmas presents, not knowing which thing to look at first. He lifted the lid from the huge pot and took a sniff. Then he rushed over and dipped a finger into a barrel of sticky yellow stuff and had a taste. Then he skipped across to one of the machines and turned half of a dozen knobs this way and that. Then he peered anxiously through the glass door of a gigantic oven, rubbing his hands and cackling with delight at what he saw inside. Then he ran over to another machine, a small shiny affair that kept going. And every time it went, a large green marble dropped out of it into a basket on the floor. At least it looked like a marble. Everlasting gobstoppers, cried Mr. Wonka proudly. They're completely new. I'm inventing them for children who are given very little pocket money. You can put an everlasting gobstopper in your mouth and you can suck it and 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 it will never get any smaller. It's like gum, cried Violet Beauregard. It is not like gum, Mr. Wonka said. Gum is for chewing, and if you tried chewing one of these gobstoppers here, you'd break your teeth off. But they taste terrific, and they change color once a week, and they never get any smaller. They never disappear. Never. At least I don't think they do. There's one of them being tested this very moment in the testing room next door. An Oompa Loompa is sucking it. He has been sucking it for nearly a year now without stopping, and it's still just as good as ever. Now over here, Mr. Wonka went on, skipping excitedly across the room to the opposite wall. Over here, I am inventing a completely new line of toffees. He stopped beside a large saucepan. The saucepan was full of thick, gooey, purplish treacle, treacle? boiling and bubbling. By standing on his toes, little Charlie could see inside it. That's hair toffee, cried Mr. Wonka. You eat just one tiny bit of that, and in exactly half an hour, a brand new, luscious, thick, silky, beautiful crop of hair will start growing out all over the top of your head. And a mustache. And a beard. A beard, cried Veruca, Veruca Salt. Who wants a beard, for heaven's sake? It would suit you very well, said Mr. Wonka. But unfortunately, the mixture is not quite right yet. I've got it too strong. It works too well. I tried it on an Oompa Loompa yesterday in the testing room, and 
Immediately, a huge beard started shooting out of his chin, and the beard grew so fast that it soon that soon it was trailing all over the floor in a thick, hairy carpet. It was growing faster than we could cut it. In the end, we had to use a lawnmower to keep it in check. But I'll get the mixture right soon, and when I do, then there'll be no excuse for any more any excuse any more for little boys and girls going about with bald heads. But Mr. Walker said my TV, little boys and girls never do go about with don't argue, my dear child. Please don't argue, cried Mr. Wonka. It's such a waste of precious time. Now, over here, if you will all step this way, I will show you how something that I am ter something that I am terrifically proud of. Oh, do be careful. Don't knock anything over. Stand back. Chapter 20, The Great Gum Machine. Do you think Baruch is also going to be a little tied up with the gum. Mr. Wonka led the party over to the gigantic machine that stood in the very center of the inventing room. It was a mountain of gleaming metal that towered high above the children and their parents. Out of the very top of it, there sprouted hundreds and hundreds of thin glass tubes, and the glass tubes all curled downwards and came together in a bunch and hung suspended over an enormous round tub as big as a bath. Here we go, cried Mr. Wonka, and he pressed three different buttons on the side of the machine. A second later, a mighty rumbling sound came from inside it, and the whole machine began to shake most frighteningly, and steam began hissing out of it all over, and then suddenly the watchers noticed that runny stuff was pouring down the insides of all the hundreds of little glass tubes and squirting out into a great tub below. And in every single tube, the running stuff was of a different color, so that all the colors of the rainbow, and many others as well, came sloshing and splashing into the tub. It was a lovely sight, and when the tub was nearly full, Mr. Wonka pressed another button, and immediately the running stuff stopped running out of the tubes and rumbling round disappeared. And a whizzing, whirring noise took its place. And then a giant wizard started whizzing around, inside the enormous tub, mixing up all the different color liquids like an ice cream soda. Gradually, the mixture began to froth. It became frothier and frothier, and it turned from blue to white to green to brown to yellow, and then back to blue again. Watch, said Mr. Wonka. Click, went the machine, and the wizard stopped whizzing. And now there came a sort of sucking noise, and very quickly, all the blue frothy mixture in the huge basin was sucked back into the stomach of the machine. There was a moment of silence. Then a few queer rumblings were heard. Then silence again. Then suddenly, the machine let on a monstrous, mighty groan. And at the same moment, a tiny drawer, no bigger than the drawer in a slot machine, popped out of the side of the machine. And in the drawer, there lay something so small and thin and gray that everyone thought it must be a mistake. The thing looked like a little strip of gray cardboard. The children and their parents start, stared at the little gray strip lying in the drawer. You mean that's all, said Mike TV, disgusted. That's all, answered Mr. Wonka, gazing proudly at the result. Don't you know what it is? There was a pause. Then suddenly, Violet Beauregard Goofy gum chewing girl, oh, I had the name wrong beforehand, <laughs> let out a yell of excitement. By gum, it's gum, she shrieked. It's a stick of chewing gum. Right you are, cried Mr. Wonka, slapping Violet hard on the back. It's a stick of gum. It's a stick of the most amazing and fabulous and sensational gum in the world. And we will say goodbye to Violet on Monday. Have a good weekend, guys.